thank you all for showing up. I'm Greg Camp. I'm the moderator for the village meetings, and this is the village meeting that we call to order in just a moment. Um, I am going to call the meeting to order and ask for a vote to start discussion after I read the article. Then there will be a presentation by the trustees, um, short or decisive, so that it'll be a little easier to understand the topics at hand. And then we can go into further discussion and then vote on the article. This is one article. There will be a regular trustees meeting at 6.30 to follow this for other business. So I legally will call for other business in this special meeting. It's more or less designed for the block party. So it'll be up to you to vote where that goes. Uh, and then before I read this, so anyone speaking and or voting needs to be a village a registered village voter, and that's why we have to all check in here. I met most of you on the way in the door and or know you. I think there's only a couple people that are not village voters, so we'd ask you to refrain, refrain from speaking and then voting as well. Um, when you do get up to speak, if you could preferably stand up if you're able and announce your name clearly and loud so that our scribe can be thanked very deeply for checking everybody in. Um, so many of you saw on Wheeler's and uh, things. Record your name. Okay. Thank you very much for coming and coming in number. Wonderful. Okay. So the legal voters of the village of Woodstock are hereby warned and notified to meet here at the town hall in said village on June 11th, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. to transact the following business from the floor. Article 1. Shall the voters of the village of Woodstock disapprove of the Title IX, Village Green, Village Gore, Parks and Public Place Ordinance, as amended by the Board of Trustees on March 12, 2024. Do I have a vote to put that most article on the floor for discussion? So, can you say your name, please? Whoever moved it? Thank you. Thank you. Seconded? All village voters in favor of putting the article on the floor for discussion signify by saying aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Let's go. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Seaton and the trustees um, for a presentation, and then we'll get back. Thank you. Um, I need to get onto the Zoom. Nikki, can you make a seat and uh, able to share a screen? She should be able to. Thank you. Uh, oh, right. Working on technology. Yeah, right. There. Okay. So everything around here. Oops. No. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay. Much better. Okay. Uh, Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll, uh, as Greg said, thank you so much for coming out tonight um, for this. My name is Seton McElroy. I'm the chair of the village trustees. And I'll let the other trustees, in case you've never been to a meeting or don't know us, introduce themselves. I'm Brenda Blakeman. I'm a village trustee. Jeffrey Kahn. Lisa Lawler, village trustee. All right, morning. And Eric. Eric Duffy, municipal manager. Um, so tonight, um, as Eric's or as Greg said, uh, what we'll do is we're going to go through a very short presentation and then we're going to open it up to public comment, which, of course, Greg will be moderating. So this is a quick slideshow just to talk specifically what exactly we're voting on. There has been some confusion back and forth, so this should clear a lot of that up. Um, if you want them, there are still, I think, a couple copies of the ordinance. Um, the old ordinance and the new ordinance that are over here. They're also available online, of course. Um, and then there is a one sheet there with a little bit more information as well. So the ballot question, again, shall the voters of the village of Woodstock disapprove of the Title IX Village Green, the Gore Parks and Public Places ordinance, ordinances as amended by the Board of Trustees on March 12th, 2024? That's what we're voting on. So I wanted to give you all a quick timeline. This is not something that happened quickly. This was a long process to get to this ordinance. This, the process to get to this ordinance started in August. In August, we determined that the Gore, which is the land that is in front of the, the library, 
and that is in front of uh, the m and Bank, is actually owned by the village. That had never been discussed. That wasn't written down anywhere. So when we discovered it, the question was, okay, what do we do with it? Um, and what happens next? So our first conversation was with the people who live around the Gore. Um, the Gore, by the way, we asked the History Center, just means a triangular piece of land. That's where the name comes from. Um, so we had discussions with the library because they have been managing and maintaining that space for a very long time. We just, we talked with other abutters of that area to get their input. Um, we made offers to the library specifically of, is this something you wanna to continue to maintain? Would you like to do a lease back? Which we had conversations about what kind of involvement they wanted. Um, they took that information to their board and their board decided that they did not want to have any involvement in that piece of land at all. Not maintaining it, not managing it, nothing. Obviously the land right in front of them where the steps are, that is theirs. Um, and of course, they've done a great job over how many ever years, so we are thankful for that. Um, but now that we realize that the village owned the space, we need to decide what happens. What are the rules? Do we use it? Do we not? Lots of questions had to be asked. So um, in November, we had our first public meeting at a trustees meeting about the use of the Gore. We had ideas from citizens, from businesses, from the trustees. Um, the next month, we also started reviewing the current use of the Gore or use of the green ordinance. Um, we started doing this because we had previously started reviewing permits and deciding, do they still make sense? Do we need to make changes? And so as we were going through that, we realized that it made sense to look at the Gore and the green as complementary spaces. They are both public spaces that should be used by the public and maybe for different reasons we wanted. And so what we decided was let's look at them at the same time and decide what makes sense in one, what makes sense in the other, because they are two very different spaces. Um, so after that, we uh, had our first draft of the ordinance that uh, was presented to the trustees, again, in a public meeting. We got input from the public, the trustees, um, the Chamber of Commerce, of course, had input, Eric had input, um, and through that, we had a couple of changes. So in February, again, at a public meeting, we presented the second draft. In the second draft, there were still a couple of things that um, that people wanted to change. Again, the public, businesses, the chamber, um, and the trustees. In March, we had the final version of the ordinance. Um, and so that was brought up for a vote before the trustees, before the public, and that ordinance passed unanimously. And so what happens in the state of Vermont is when an ordinance passes, it doesn't go into effect for 60 days. In that period of time, if within 44 days, a petition is submitted with at least 5% of the voting population signing that petition, we have to hold a special meeting, which is what this is, to vote whether to overturn the ordinance or to keep the ordinance. So on April 23rd, we received a petition that requested to have a special meeting in order to hold a public vote on overturning the ordinance. So once we received that, that sort of 60 day time clock stopped. And what it meant was that we then had a certain amount of days to schedule this meeting. So that is now done. And so what you have today is the meeting that has that that was requested by this petition. And what will happen today is um, if there is a no vote, it means that the current ordinance stands and it goes into effect immediately. If there is a yes vote, that overturns the ordinance, and that means that the previous ordinance remains in effect. So that means that everything that we've had for the past 10, 15 years will remain in effect. So no vote means new ordinance, yes vote means old ordinance. So just an overview of what has changed with the new ordinance. So the first thing that it does is it allows permitted nonprofit events on the Gore. When we discovered that we had that the village owned the Gore, we quickly decided that because we didn't because we hadn't gotten public input and because there was not an ordinance, there was not going to be anything allowed on the Gore until we decided what to do with it. We wanted to get public input. We went out, we discussed this with the, the library, asked their opinion, people that abutted the area. We talked with the Garden Club because the Garden Club uses it every year as they just did. We got their input. And we of course had those conversations uh, at, at public meetings. So the first thing it does is it allows for there to be things on the Gore. Prior to this, and after the live, after we discovered we owned it, there was nothing allowed because there were no rules. There was no permit to give because we didn't have a process. 
The second thing that it changes is it restricts private events that are permitted on the green to only 12 times a year. Prior, there was no restriction. There was no limit to how many private events could happen on the green. It was completely at the discretion of the trustees. The trustees could say yes or no at any time. It also restricts private permitted events to 100 people. Again, prior, there were no rules. It was completely at the discretion of the trustees. You could have an event with 100 people, with 1,000 people. The people sitting at this table purely made the, the decisions on that because that's what the previous ordinance said. It also requires private permitted events on the green to pay a use fee. Again, because there were no rules and it was purely at the discretion of the trustees, we could charge people $5, we could charge them $1,000. We could not charge them anything at all. The other changes that it made was we, in this new ordinance, it makes permit holders for events on the green financially responsible for repairs to damage caused by their event. Previously, we did not have any language in the ordinance that held those people responsible. If anything went wrong, it would be up to us to pay a lawyer, <laughs> which is a lot, to start going after somebody. What we have done in the new ordinance is we have legal language that when somebody gets a permit and signs off on it, says that they will abide by that and that they are financially responsible. Also, it makes permit holders for events on the green financially responsible for trash cleanup from their event. Again, there was nothing in the previous version that said that people who had permits had to clean up after themselves. We made the suggestion, but we didn't have any legal backing behind that. The new ordinance has that. So when somebody signs that permit and we say, hey, you left trash on the ground, and they say, not my problem. We go, yes, it is, because that's what they signed off on. So all of these things, these two things specifically, we did because people should clean up after themselves, but also because taxpayers should not be on the hook for any events that do damage or leave trash on the green. Here are the things that did not change in the new ordinance. Private parties continue to be allowed on the green with a permit. Private parties have for at least 10 to 15 years, as far as I can tell, been allowed on the green with a permit. That has been the rule for a very long time. And so that will continue to be allowed. It's just that we are limiting it. Alcohol continues to be allowed on the green with a permit. This again is in the current ordinance. If you vote yes today and overturn the new ordinance, alcohol will still be allowed on the green. If you've ever been to Wassel, you know that alcohol is on the green every December, and I hope you've all enjoyed it. Um, casual gatherings of friends and family continue to be allowed on the green without a permit. If you wanna go out and have a picnic, great, do it. You don't need a permit. You might've seen some people out on the green today with a sign and a table talking about SDRs. They did not need a permit. That's a casual thing. That is not a private event. They were totally allowed to do that. So it will continue to be open to that. Public use of the green also continues to be allowed at all times, regardless of whether it is being used for a private or public event. And we mean that. This is the people's green out here. This is some people's front lawn. No matter what's happening, whether it's pride, whether it's market on the green, excuse me, you wanna walk your dog, you wanna have a picnic, you are welcome to do that at any time. And when people receive permits, they are told that. There is no exclusivity. There is no roping things off unless there's alcohol, in which case you have to legally. So this does not restrict the public from the green under any circumstances. So what does a no vote mean today? A no vote means the new ordinance will go into effect immediately. It means permitted nonprofit events will be allowed on the green or on the gore rather immediately. Alcohol will continue to be allowed on the green with a permit as it always has been. Private events on the green with a permit will be limited to only 12 times a year. Private events on the green with a permit will be limited to only a hundred people. Private events on the green with a permit will be required to pay anywhere from 150 to $550 based on the number of attendees. Permitted groups will be responsible for the cost to repair damage or clean up trash from their event on the green or the gore. <clears throat> what does a yes vote mean? A yes vote means that the old ordinance will remain in effect. It means that no permitted events will be allowed on the gore. Alcohol will continue to be allowed on the green with a permit as it always has been. Unlimited private events on the green with a permit will continue to be allowed as they always have been. 
Unlimited numbers of attendees will continue to be allowed for private events on the green with the permit as they always has been. A yes me vote also means that private on events on the green with a permit will not be required to pay for the use of the green. A yes vote means that the village with taxpayer funds will be responsible for the cost to repair damage or clean up trash from permitted events on the green or the gore. This new ordinance, as we've designed it with public input, benefits local nonprofits because we are giving them priority in the gore. The gore will only be for local nonprofits. It reduces taxpayer funded expenses because we are not on the hook for cleanup or for fixing any damage on either of those spaces. This is gonna bring new revenue in. If anybody watched our meeting last night, you will know that we need some revenue and it really should not be coming from the taxpayers. Um, we also provide fair and predictable access to the gore and the green. By just allowing the trustees to pick and choose who is on the green, that even with the best of intentions can allow favoritism. With the best of intentions, that makes it unfair for people who don't have access to show up at a meeting or to talk to one of us personally or to get off of work to have a conversation with, with the municipal manager. The new ordinance also ensures that the green will remain a public place for everyone to enjoy. Thank you. So at this time, we would entertain for village voters any questions or comments. And if we could keep them in case the crowd gets going somewhat, but go ahead. Uh, John, do you have any questions? Can you talk to the podium? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm telling that the Zoom. No. Okay, starting over. John Vealy, uh, three questions, no particular order. First, uh, if the tax burden for cleanup is on the village? Are the broader town tax people not responsible? Does it not affect their taxes? Is this village specific? It so it would the way that we manage the the gore and the way that we manage the roads and the parks is the town has that so it is money goes back and forth. So should, second question, shouldn't the village and the town then vote on this? No, because, because under the ordinance, the village is responsible for the management of the of the green and then we own the gore. So, and that is in the current ordinance. How many permits historically on a yearly basis are issued for? Zero, for, for, historically, there have been a few. For public? That's not zero. Historically, if there are some, there are some. What is for that? Public or, are you asking for public or private? Both. Oh. oh. Um, I mean, we probably have a dozen or I would say anywhere from 12 to 20 a year, at least. Yeah, but about that. But most of those are for nonprofits. Uh, private parties, we've had one in the past year. One. One. And then lastly, if there was a yes vote, does the management of the gore then go back to the library or does it stay? No, no, it 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 belongs to the village. Thank you. No, oh, there's a there's a back there. Yep. Back. Yeah. Because if you don't mind, you can't yeah. podium. Sorry, I forgot to announce that. Yep. You can both be there. You can put podium in quotes. Um my name's Ben. Paul. I just want to thank the trustees for taking so much time. I, I have not been a part of the discussion um up till now. Um, but I appreciate all the thoughts that you guys put into it. Um, to me, I just have a comment is um, these, uh, this ordinance seems more restrictive, more control, more revenue um, for the town. It seems like it's set in the right direction. Um, I have never noticed in my time living here any public event that was an issue, um, even if I re registered it as a public event. So it seems like a seems like a non-issue to me. It's, it's not something that um, I would love the trustees to spend more time on other issues. Um, I appreciate the time that you spent. Uh, I appreciate this time you spent on it up till now. Um, I, I just don't see any reason why it makes sense to go backwards um, to try to go farther. I appreciate people who think we should charge more. Um, I appreciate people who think um, there should be no public events. Um, there should be no alcohol. Um, but if it's under discussion, if those things want to be changed in the future, 
um, you guys have the power to change that with another ordinance another at some time in the future. So I encourage people to bring that to attention if they want to, um, and you can take it up if you want to. But I really appreciate the work that you put into it, and uh, I support uh, voting no. Thank you. Questions and comments? Anyone else? Yeah, Andy Caffrey. So things such as butchers on parade, market on the green, the lobster fest, those are not impacted at all by this. No. They're nonprofits. Um, was the lobster a nonprofit thing? Yes, yes it was. Yeah. It's, yeah. It was. It was a nonprofit. Yeah. Uh, do they pay any permit fees or cleanup fees? So under this, they are, so everybody who's, anybody who uses the green is going to be required to pay a security deposit that is 100% refundable, assuming everything is cleaned up afterwards. Um, and then there is a permit, there is a permit fee, uh, I believe it's $50, oh, okay. and then for the gore, it's 25. Yeah. yeah, and there has always been a, a, a fee, um, and then of course, a certificate of insurance, which has always been standard. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Susie Stolz, um, so I heard just tonight in this meeting, in the audience, that the plant sale will no longer be allowable under this new or in the ordinance that you passed and that a uh, vote no someone just told me that that we're not allowed to have the that you and you said quite the opposite so that is i'm asking you plant sale can still happen absolutely. the garden club can still have they're a local nonprofit, and anyone who says otherwise is wrong that right. is correct thank you yeah. thank you okay please come up to the voting and announce your name Wendy Meriden, I echo um, the appreciation for all the hard work you guys are consistently doing. Um, I know that sometimes I bring the other vantage point to your meetings, and I, I, I'm offering that this evening. Um, my concern with the new ordinance is that it is bringing forward private events on the green. And advertising the uh, the availability a availability to rent the green for private functions i can't find the language in in the original ordinance about private rentals all i find is the phrase about variances mm -hmm. which is gray that's discretion and there's another clause the last one um on the long list, N, the Board of Village Trustees has the discretionary authority to grant permits that are not in strict conformance with the standards. So my first, my question is, is that what you mean by clarity? This is too vague. So in any policy, as you've been navigating all of these years, doesn't the, isn't there a need for some wiggle room in an ordinance. And so that's what we've been living with historically. So the judgment you've made historically for private events where the public is excluded from participating, I don't know how many, I can't name any except for a Porsche party a while back. There was a wedding, a uh, morning after a wedding party. So, um, that was on the so that's an example. So, so my concern and why I am not in favor, there's just one aspect I'm not in favor of the new ordinance, and that's about bringing in private event rentals. It's turning the, the green into a facility, and it changes the experience for the public. No matter how welcoming you say we are, you have a wedding banquet on the green, and it's just not where you want to walk the dog. So I really feel that if we vote yes, saying let's look at this again, sorry you worked hard, I attend a lot of meetings, I totally missed this, I apologize. I knew you were addressing the gore, which is kind of the, was the reason you went into this in the first place. I didn't see the private rental thing coming. So that's my issue. So if we vote yes and we say back to the old board, I still in, think the trustees will want to bring the gore into that ordinance. I don't think we have to lose everything in this ordinance that you've done if we consider not including renting to private events. That's my comment. And 
Thank you. Hi, Barbara Kennedy in Woodstock. Are there any time? Yep. That's it. <laughs> I'm Barbara Kennedy and I live in Woodstock. Hi. Um, are there any time boundaries for these events? Could they go on to midnight? Oh, no. Start no. at two in the morning? No. So are those time boundaries somehow? They are the same time boundaries as the noise ordinance in the village. Noise ordinance. Oh, yes. So it, we, yes. Thank you. Anyone else? So I'm Bob Hager. I'll be brief. Uh, I just, I think this is a good job, a very reasonable ordinance uh, that our trustees have arrived at. Uh, I like I like using the green as much as possible. I think it's a, a center for the village, and uh, and uh, I think we should encourage uh, public use of the green and, and private use too, uh, on, on on carefully reviewed by the trustees. I also think uh, this whole petition deal. I understand that it's a part of democracy, but I also I don't like it. I mean, uh, we elect our trustees to to study things and, and make reasonable decisions. And in this case, they've worked very, very hard on on, on this ordinance. And uh, I don't I don't see overturning it by a, a petition. So I urge a no vote. Thank you. There. Go ahead. Welcome to announce your name. I'm Elisa Tarlow. So I started the petition and I want to thank everyone for everything. I did not know about this until I got the message that it became an amendment. So if I had known sooner, I would have participated in the meetings, but I didn't. And I asked people if they were interested, if what people felt, if I was the only one that was against the private parties, I wouldn't have done anything. And I got an overwhelming response. The majority of my response was from people outside of the village that can't participate in any of this. They feel very left out of the situation. They feel like the green is for everyone. Um, that's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. And that's the way it is. Um, I think that the, the biggest issue that everyone I spoke with and that I personally have is the private parties. No one's gonna walk their dog through a private party. I mean, it's just not reasonable to think that people are gonna use the green in a pri when there's a private party going on. And I think that it's not the best way to gain revenue. I mean, there's people that are even saying, if that's, you know, if you need 12 times $500, like they'll cover it. Like this is just not the way to gain revenue for the town. We need the green to be open to everybody all the time is the feedback that I got from almost everybody. Everyone loves the plant. Um, sale. Everyone wants nonprofits to have space. No one that wants this amendment to fail wants the gore to not get included in the writings. I mean, we could literally just keep everything and remove private parties. The um, private parties were only done by discretion and they were very few. Once you put it in there, people will come and they will fill those 12 spots, I believe. So it's it's not fair to say there were so many and, and we could do anything we wanted. You're going to do what you think is right, which is likely not more than what you've put in this amendment anyways. So I think it's not really accurate to portray this as it's this or that. I think if this amendment doesn't go through, a new amendment can be created or you could just slightly edit this to remove private party parties or edit the old amendment to include the gore and remove discretion if you don't want to have discretion. Um, I think there's a lot of ways to go about this. Another change is the old amendment had events going until 8 p.m. This new amendment goes until 10 p.m. Maybe that's the same as the no noise ordinance. I don't know that, but that is a difference in the two ordinances. And I just want to thank everybody who has passion about this issue and participated. Um, it's been just amazing for me to hear so many historic stories in the town and I loved speaking with so many people. So thank you.
Woodstock has significant. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Roger Logan. I live in Woodstock Village. Um, Woodstock has significant problems that need to be addressed, and we need to be able to concentrate on those problems. This is a very common sense ordinance. It tries to address some problems. It was in warned meetings. It is for for months. If we're going to revisit every single decision that is ever made, we will never get the hard work that needs to be done done. If every single thing is second guess, we're lucky that we now have board leadership and and other volunteer leadership and um, town staff people who are addressing and looking for ways to solve the significant problems that we're facing, one of which is to find revenue. I urge everyone to vote against what's on the floor tonight and let us go forward with the real work of making Woodstock the best place we can make it. Thank you. Spectre. Um, thank you for all your work, and I think it's a very commonsensical um, amendment. I did have one question that came up, which has to do with the fact that people can gather on the green at their own will without a permit. So what distinguishes, this applies to actually whether we say yes or no, what distinguishes a private event that needs to be permitted from one that just happens to have happen? So if somebody is gathering on the green to have their picnic, I'm not going to walk through that picnic, whether it's permitted or not, but how are you going to enforce whatever it is that is constituting a permitted private event? So I think the the first thing would be that um, when when people ask for a permit, one, did you ask for a permit? I think that we tend to be very in Woodstock. We look at um, if something's going on in the green, if something is going on that's not to the letter, does it make sense to crack down or not? So I think if there was somebody that was on the green that had blankets out and balloons and a birthday cake with 10 kids running around, I don't think that would be, I don't think you would need a permit for that. Um, I do think that if you have tables set up, if you have, uh, if you have any like big chairs, tents, I think once you start getting into infrastructure, that's more of a permitted thing. Um, but we, I think, but when we're looking at private events, we're thinking of big parties, big things that are going on. Jeffrey, do you have? Well, yeah, it, 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 you know, I agree with what Seton just said. And we've had so few private events and there would not be uh, any advertisement, this ordinance goes, if this four ordinance goes into effect, it's not like we're going to be taking out posters and putting up signs saying, hey, private events, please come in. <laughs> That's not what we're doing. And I don't think it will affect anything. Don't forget, we're only allowing one per month. And for six months of the year, it's very unlikely anyone's going to want to be on the green. So the most you're talking about is six. And and we're, I'm not expecting us to have any, maybe one or two. It might happen because it has happened, but this just regulates it if it if it should come up and gives us some parameters. And other than the one we had a year ago, I can tell you that there was one six years ago uh, for a business named Unicorn celebrating its 40th anniversary, and and we had a band on the green, and and everyone in the town was just for the village. Everyone in the town was invited. Everyone had a great time, and we cleaned up. And it was wonderful. Anyway, that happened. So let's let's relax about this. It's and I think just to add on to that, and I'm glad you asked that question, Wendy. This is also, and I think someone else mentioned that this is a living document. All of our ordinances are living documents. So whatever happens today is not the end of the road. I will tell you the trustees, the village has other priorities right now. We've got foliage coming up. We've got Wassail coming up. Um, we need more money in the bank um so this is something that if we what we discover in the future is like hey we discovered this is not working let's talk about it like we are here every month you are all invited back we have a meeting tonight it would be great if you guys all stayed because that's where we make decisions 
please come. I look at Wendy. I know you're here all the time. Um, please, that's good. It's good she shows up. Um, so think of this as like if what we decide, if the, if we start working on this and somebody goes, oh my God, this is not working, or oh my God, we need to charge twice as much, or nobody can afford that. Like, come tell us. Like, let's talk about it. Let's make changes. Every, all of this is a living document. And one of the, another reason, I mean, we discovered the gore. We started reviewing things. But every so often you look at things and go, is it still working for us? And so that is a question we have to constantly ask. We can't ask about all things because we don't have that kind of time. But continue to come to us. Our emails, and I've said this a million times, our emails are on the website. Eric is happy to talk to you anytime. He's here five days a week. Come talk to us, email us. Some people have storefronts and they're happy to have you stop in. So consider this a continuing conversation. This is not the end for anything. I just have one last thing. Susie Stulls, so I've heard many times tonight that people don't feel free to walk their dogs during an event. I've walked my dog during Jeffrey's event and during the wedding. And guess what? I have a little Yorkie. They love my Yorkie. People walk their dogs in the park. Can I hear someone yes, call. Move, move the question or call? Yeah. Yep, just your name. Andy Cap. Okay. Someone second that? Yeah, All in favor of moving the question, which would end the discussion and bring us into a vote. This would not be a vote on the actual article, but to move it to a vote. All in favor of doing so, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We will move to a vote. Can we try a voice vote, do you think? Or <laughs> no? Oh, that's a lot of people. Oh, hands anyway. Yeah. Or stand. Yeah, oh yeah, standing would be good. If it looks too close for, for Don and myself to get an accurate count, we might go to paper ballot if requested. One oh, more time. We do have people standing. We do have chair. Chair, I wear. Sit down. People standing. No hands. Hand. Yeah, hand. We'll start with hands, and just when you put your hand up, keep it up so that they can count. And again, one more time. No means that that the the new ordinance goes into effect. Yes means the new ordinance does not go into effect, and we go back to the old ordinance. Everybody got it? You know what no means? You know what yes means? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Take it away. <laughs> Correct? So let's first go again on saying no to this article, which again would tell us that the ordinance will go into effect. Uh, should we keep them up, please? Because we do want a number. Okay. Yeah. 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 Keep those hands up, just in case, just in case. I think we're double counting. No, I'm just going. I went to right here, Don. Okay, sorry. Don't forget us. Don't hey. forget us. Oh. And yourselves. Whatever you got. Can we put our hands down yet? Okay, hands down. Thank you for your patience. Hang on. We'll be right with you. He's just getting a total. You good? Yeah. Okay. All those who would vote yes. Which would turn down and put us back to the old order. A little easier count, but that's okay. Yeah, keep them up though, so we can. And then I'll do this side. Okay, thank you. Sorry, don't mean to single people out. <laughs> Trying to keep keep them accurate. I know it's official. So we had 62 votes for no and 13 votes for yes. So that would mean. That what? means the article fails so the new ordinance goes into effect. Yes. Correct? Everybody clear? Um, just before everybody's current, get quick, this is a skipping call, but a special meeting. So we want to adjourn this. Any other questions or discussion about the special meeting before they move into their regular meeting? <laughs> Anybody want to move to close the special? 
Joining the special of the village of Woodstock, think about saying hi. You both? <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Thank you for the turnout.